go to tradition and, 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 and culture, LGBTI has been there. It differs from country to country, from language to language, from tradition to tradition. Strategy planning was one of the most important issues that was mentioned. That don't just be taken by emotions. It's important to sit down, strategize, involve, then we can be able to face whatever issue that you want to face. For accurate is the information that we bring and, and what we bring to the table when we want to make this when we want to engage with these policymakers? Well, I think for me, one key aspect was that, was alliance building um, in terms of, you know, used, utilizing, you know, existing networks. And use those to build up at the macro level. So, for example, the bodies like UN and AU to engage with our policymakers. We need to capacitate religious leaders who are pro LGBT issues so that they can be our gatekeepers, so that they can spearhead our you know, um, campaigns to talk to other religious leaders in the communities. We need to become innovative in firstly how we use our information, our research, and, and how we come up with our advocacy strategies and how we're going to link up and gain access to policymakers. For us to be visible, we need to voice our, our, our concern, we need to voice our opinion, we need to be heard developing regional research and best practices yeah. and then using those to then develop or possibly change negative attitudes and make them into positive attitudes um, within policy makers so they implement and adopt policies that are pro-LGBTI. It is also important to engage families in terms of acceptance as well as build alliances with other organizations that would have shown sympathy to us and as part of the challenges that we that we came up with as an organization or as a, as a group rather, we realized that most of the spaces in which we are using either hold, they are restricted to the public. We need to look into technology on how best we can use technology to make sure that we promote outreach and public education. Just human rights based approaches. Uh, the Human Rights Council, for instance, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Um, it, these are events that happen regularly and where um, uh, LGBTI uh, activists attend and they can network with each other, learn from other people, engage the commissioners, engage the special rapporteurs and, and, and go in coalitions and, 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 and be able to support resolutions that advance rights for uh, sexual minorities, uh, se sexual and gender minorities. So going back to the villages, what language do we use? And also back to the terminology, what other terms that are we using? We really need to start questioning the norm, that's our way forward. After we have questioned the norm, why do we do these things? Why do we even need, is there any need to then conform to certain labels and binaries and boxes? And after we have questioned that, we need to own the difference to then say, I might want to identify as an it. That shouldn't be even up for discussion. We need to now start a process of dialogues and a process of giving information at its simplest form. Welcome to COPANO 2017, a gathering of groups that are working to advance equality, freedom and well-being of homosexual and bisexual women and men and transgender and intersex people in Southern Africa. Our theme this year is Accelerating Change. Over the next three days, we encourage all discussants to make full use of this LGBTI space, where people, places, and ideas meet to help make freedom a reality for all. My name is Bella Matambanato. I'm the co-chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the Other Foundation, and I officially declare COPANO Accelerating Change open! <laughs>